Hey, I'm Maud and welcome to my pillar guide. In this guide we're going to go over pillar mechanics, pillar movement and volume, and how to deal with the mark of the elements. The main mechanic of pillars is the order they have to be killed in. This order is determined based on the order of which the minions die on phase 3. A useful tool to always know the order of what to kill the pillars in is by using the better AOD all one plugin created by RSN 12 Dragon 162. This all one plugin can be downloaded by using the link in the description. Open the link while having the RS browser open, then grant the required permissions. This plugin displays minion orders in letters or number format with an optional audio readout. Another feature is configurable audio and text warnings on main mechanics like smoke, pools, and bombs. The other mechanic is that each pillar has a special tag. These are activated if the player is able to be attacked by necks and if that appropriate crystal is still alive. The only noteworthy pillars to go over are the effects of the Umbra and Glacis pillars. The special of the Umbra pillar is that it places shadows on the player's current position. If you stand on these shadows for too long, it will start dealing rapid damage to the player. These shadows are not player specific, so your shadows can harm others and vice versa. These can be avoided by moving around. Glacis special will bind your player in place, if not Prey and Mage. Also, regardless of Prey and Mage, a timer will start gradually freezing the player's screen. Once this timer ends, you'll be bound in place and take rapid damage. This can be avoided by using the Freedom ability, or killing the pillar itself. While neither of these effects are super scary themselves, the synergy of both of them happening can lead to seriously high KO potential. The current Fuma special is not really meaningful in any way, and therefore can be ignored completely. The last mechanic to go over is the insta-kill slash bomb mechanic. This mechanic first comes out 10 seconds after the next phase is into pillars, and then comes out on a cycle every 20 seconds. The first part of the mechanic is that you get a bar above your head, and once this fills up and you're not inside the outline shield in the center of the arena, you'll be instantly killed. The second part of this mechanic is that you get another bar above your head. Once this fills up, it will place a 7x7 bomb around your player's position, dealing rapid damage to everyone inside it. This bomb cannot deal damage unless you are able to be attacked by necks, and even if you are inside the bomb. Not handling this mechanic properly can lead to catastrophic effects for yourself and for your team. Careful, Spongebob! Careful, Spongebob! Spongebob, careful! Careful, Spongebob! Careful, Spongebob! Careful, Spongebob! Careful, Spongebob! Oh, now it's my turn! Oh, you I'm... fucking dick! Fuck, <laughs> Fuck you! Oh, he's alive. Moving on to section 2. Pillar movement. In this section, we're going to be going over ability movement order, how to put that into an actual kill, and pillar vulnerable. The first point we're going to go over is the movement ability order. The order of abilities is a non channel ability such as Sonic Wave, Dive, and then Surge, all in the same tick. To help execute this properly, at some point before doing your last ability, you're going to want to pre position your dive left click in the direction you want it to go. Doing this allows you to only have to do three inputs in one tick instead of four. To execute the movement, as soon as you press your Sonic Wave ability, click to activate the Dive ability, and then press Surge. Make sure all these inputs are done in one tick in that specific order. If they are not done in the same tick, it can lead to your Sonic Wave facing you towards your current target, and then your Surge will take you in the wrong direction relative to your Dive ability. I highly recommend you practice this at dummies before trying to AOD, but practicing at dummies can only take you so far. Putting this into actual kills has the additional step of having to pre-position your character closer to the pillar you are trying to go to. This is important due to dive and surge still not putting you in target cycle range if you are too close to the pillar when doing the action. This can lead to losing ticks on pillars and therefore damage. To pre-position your player, move in the direction of the next pillar in the order, while simultaneously hugging the walls of the arena to avoid pillar mechanics. This pre-position should be done as far away as possible from the pillar while still being able to attack. The same logic can be applied on diagonal pillars. Just keep in mind you are going to be attacked by necks when positioning due to not being able to hug the arena walls. Therefore, forcing you close to necks, allowing for pillar mechanics. Moving around pillars using this technique gives you the largest amount of time to get situated on the pillar, allowing you to get ready to use target cycle and other abilities. Now moving on to a walk through three of the pillars. To get to the first pillar, you should only use surge to preserve your other cooldowns. To go from the first to second pillar, you use the Dive and Surge ability using the method we went over earlier. Second to third is also going to use this method, however on faster teams you are going to run into cooldown issues. To get around this we are going to go over the power burst of acceleration. Wanna see me run to that mountain and back? You wanna see me do it again? Now moving on to what this potion actually does. The cooldown of your Surge and Dive abilities is now reduced to 1.2 seconds, and if these movement abilities are on cooldown, they will become immediately usable upon drinking this potion. This effect lasts 6 seconds. 
This can be powerful if used correctly due to cooldown issues. To use correctly, the power base acceleration should be used at the second pillar so that the effects is still active while doing the dive and surge to the third pillar. This is important to make sure you don't have any cooldown issues from third to fourth pillar and for the mark of the elements. Third to fourth should also use the same method from first to second, same with second to third. Getting down these movements consistently while still following your rotation is a struggle for a lot of people, but building up the habit will just come with time and practice. Once you've gotten down to pillars to a reasonable extent, another skill that you should learn is pillar volume. Being good at pillar volume to the point that the pillar is volume as early as possible can make a huge difference for your team's pillar speeds. Volume the pillars is the responsibility of the dedicated pillar volume, which generally defaults to the Umbra minion tank on almost all teams. Volning correctly on pillars is a common struggle of AODs trying to improve their pillars. One cause of these struggles is making the volts harder for yourself by incorrectly throwing the volume bomb at the base of the pillar, which only allows for two tiles to be thrown on. The correct way of doing this is by throwing the bomb on the outskirts of the pillar. This allows for a much larger area for you to throw your volume bomb. Combining pillar volume with pillar movement can be tricky and takes practice, but over time it should end up like seen in these clips. Finally, we're going to go over how to deal with the Mark of the Elements mechanic properly for minimal damage loss. The main logic behind dealing with this optimally is by making sure that you keep your time, not dealing damage to the pillars on next to absolute minimum. Moving into the example. First, I position my character so that I can make it to the middle of the arena while only using one dive. After I've done this, I am waiting for the bar to fill up and keep damaging the pillar. Once this bar is about to fill up, I go to position my cursor so that I can dive into the center. Once the bar is almost filled, I use my Dragon Breath with my dive to keep damaging the pillar and make it to the center. Whilst I am in the middle, I use a basic to gain a drain while waiting to block the mark of the elements. Once I have done this, I surge out and get ready for the next pillar. To execute properly, you should go to the middle as late as possible on your bar, allowing you to do an ability inside the middle to either build a drain or use damage boosting abilities like Zerk, Meta or the ECB spec and then move out of the middle. Due to the nature of the mechanic having the punishment of insta-kill, I highly recommend that you take this at your own pace and work your way up going later and later going into the middle. The secondary mechanic, being the bomb mechanic, is also very important. A lot of people struggle with this part due to having their movement abilities on cooldown, however if using the movement order ability gone over earlier, you should have at least one movement ability after moving out of the middle. To deal with this bomb properly when not on zero, you should be able to keep damaging the pillar and place the bomb as close to the pillar as possible due to the bomb not dealing damage unless you can be attacked by next. If your bomb is going to be placed on zero, so this can get a bit trickier. To do this bomb properly it needs to be placed where none of your teammates currently are. On a proper team, the whole team should be melee distance to next, allowing for the largest area in which to place the bomb. This allows for three main areas in which to place the bomb. Either to the right or left of next, these two have been the most safe options. If placed here, there should be no issues with anyone getting hit by the bomb. However, if you mess up your movement ability order, as a last ditch effort, you can place it melee distance to the last pillar, assuming the pillar is dead. However, this should only be used if absolutely necessary. Keep in mind, this bomb is a 7x7 area, and as a reference, it's the same size as the sunshine or death swiftness. Moving on to the example. Once I do my damaging ability on the pillar before my bomb places, I surge into a position to drop the bomb to the left of next and ensure that no one is hit. Once I have placed my bomb, I move out of range using my dive ability, however you could move normally due to there being a delay on the bomb placing. These mechanics are simple themselves but are hard to get down perfectly due to the high punishment of messing up. Take this at your own time and don't rush into it because you'll either die a lot or kill your team a lot, which is never a good thing. Before the video ends, I'd like to give a huge shout out to Iris and Various for doing all the editing on this video, and it wouldn't have been possible without him. Finally, if you're looking for more guides on AOD such as rotations, please join the next AOD FC Discord, linked in the description. Thank you for watching, and I hope this helps.